Hi everybody, today is February 5th, 2014. I thought this was interesting. I've heard other talk about this date of March. What I find interesting about the March date is that there's this cloud in the star system of Sagittarius that was recently discovered that's falling into a black hole that many scientists are predicting is going to create gamma and x-rays that very possibly could fry the Earth. This cloud is called the G2 cloud. And within this cloud is several star systems. So there's been talk of an elite insider predicting a massive crash in 2012. But more than likely they're saying now it's going to happen around March 4th of 2014. We understand that doomsday predictions are a plenty these days, but given what's been going on around the world right now, it may be time to revisit the early precedent forecast of an elite insider. Grandy Means is a former advisor to Vice President Nielsen Rockefeller, a former economist at the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, and has managed multi-million dollar firms over his career. Back in October of 2012, Means penned a commentary and analysis for the Washington Times in which he noted that America's fall will take global economies with it. And they're talking about that now, especially when our debt comes due at the end of this week, in fact. But with transferring funds from one area to another, they'll probably get it to last until the end of the month. But he did not stop there. Means gave a target date. There is a very large probability that the rural end of the world will occur around March 4th, 2014. The doomsday clock will ring then when the U.S. economy may fully crash around that date, which will in turn bring down all world economies and all hope for any recovery for the foreseeable future. Certainly over the course of most of our lifetimes, interest rates will skyrocket, businesses will fail, unemployment will go to record levels, material and food shortages will be rampant, and there could be major social unrest. Any wishful thinking that America is in the recovery and that things are getting better is an illusion. The central issue is confidence in America and the world is losing confidence quickly. At a center point soon the United States will reach a level of deficit spending and the debt at which the countries of the world will lose faith in America and begin to withdraw their investments. Many leading economists and bankers think another trillion dollars or so may do it. A run on the banks will start suddenly, build quickly and snowball. With the last three days, I believe, four days that the stock market was open, it lost over $3 trillion here in the U.S. At that point, we will need to finance our own deficit, and we will not be able to do so. We will raise bond rates to reattach foreign investment. Interest will go up, and businesses will fail. Unemployment will skyrocket. The rest of the world will fully crash along with us. There's a sentiment among those on Main Street and as of today on Wall Street, there is a major disconnect between company stock variations and economic activity in the real world. Despite their best efforts to convince us that we're in a recovery, the establishment is running into a problem. Reality. This morning we learned that the Institute for Supply Management monthly report went kaboom, showing a large contraction in new production, indicating that retailers are pulling back on stocking their shelves. See, in my work, they're doing that too, and they're cutting people's hours. We got a pay raise, and then after our pay raise, we got our hours cut. One lady had zero hours. She's a single mom. She has to work two jobs to support her two teenage children. And when she went to the boss to ask bo the boss why her hours were cut, my boss actually said, what do you need the money for? I guess she feared because she's working two jobs, she didn't need this one. Not understanding that she has two children to support all by herself. So retailers are pulling back on stocking their shelves. Perhaps the ISM report has something to do with consumer sentiment, which according to today's Gallup survey on consumer spending suggests consumers are cutting costs wherever possible. But that's not all. Even the largest retailers in the world is having problems and seeing negative growth. Walmart's announcement that last November cut to food stamp recipients hurt their fourth quarter sales, adding further credence to the notion that without direct government bailouts, the stability of American companies comes into question. Need we even mention that over 1 million Americans are not in the labor force or that 5 million people may lose their unemployment benefits by the end of this year? And of course, let's not forget that we've created more debt as a nation in the last five years 
than in all the years our country's founding through the year 2008 combined. Those investing in financial markets have certainly taken note. I think the ones that are jumping out of the windows have taken note so far four in one week. On top of the 326 point decline in the Dow Jones today, now this was posted yesterday, the market is down a combined 1,000 points from its peak a month ago. And with three well-known bankers, make that four, committing suicide in the last week, people are starting to pay attention. No one really knows exactly why the market is falling or what happens next. But if you're going to consider any prediction on the future of the financial and economic sector, why not consider what the elite have to say about it? If there is a major financial collapse in the works as we speak, then Grady Means' prediction should scare the hell out of you. If he's right, then this isn't going to be a market crash. We could well be facing the beginning of an all-out financial Armageddon that will make 2008 look like a brief warm-up. This collapse is noted by the U.S. Treasury Department and Grady Means is going to have generational effects, a depressive economic environment of our entire lifetimes. Preparing for such a scenario is not easy. One must take into consideration everything from emergency supply lists to deal with the instantaneous collapse of our monetary system and financial markets while also considering long-term strategies that involve the development of barter trade skill and relocating to land that has productive capacity so that you can grow your own food. Comparing the 1929 crash to if a crash happened today, most people didn't live in the cities. Most people had small gardens at least. They had some chickens and maybe a few pigs. When the wars broke out, they had what was called victory gardens. With so many people living in apartments and in major cities, there is no way they have the capacity to grow their own food. Not to mention the droughts that are going across the western part of the United States where they just might not even have water to water their gardens. We had a reader recently comment about the coming collapse. She warned that preparing for a weeks or month long emergency is insufficient. She suggested that perhaps we need to consider the worst case scenario. Years of joblessness, destitution, and desperation. It happened before, and it was so bad we still talk about the Great Depression to this day. But if it was to happen today, these younger generations do not know how to plant a seed or even how to take care of livestock, how to even preserve foods. Desperate people will do desperate things and they will be taking steel from others. It'll be all out chaos because, yeah, when you have a family and you have starving children and the cupboards are bare and no money to buy food, they're going to take from others. If this happens, it'll be mass riots and mass deaths. All right, bookmark my site. I'll keep you up to date. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you there. God bless you. Bye.